on July 19, 1977, the world teacher, the Christ Maitreya, head of the spiritual hierarchy, emerged from his ancient retreat and is now in the modern world. With his disciples, the masters of the wisdom, he will inaugurate the new age of synthesis and brotherhood. Good morning and welcome to our World Teacher Programme on Wellington's Access Radio 106.1 FM presented by Teresa and David on behalf of Share International New Zealand. Today our programme begins with a review of Benjamin Krem's book The Gathering of the Forces of Light, UFOs and Their Spiritual Mission published in July 2010. This review by Dick Larson features in the September 2013 edition of Share International magazine and begins. The Gathering of the Forces of Light, UFOs and Their Spiritual Mission by Benjamin Krem is an invaluable document for those seeking information about the how and why of UFO activity, which has become so apparent lately. Are any of them real? If so, which ones? Why are they here? Why don't we see them all the time? What do the space people look like? This fascinating book holds the answers to these and many more questions about the space people and their spaceships, providing specific information not found elsewhere. The Gathering of the Forces of Light is also the definitive book for those who have been seeking compelling information on more effective approaches to education, including the parenting of children. It opens with Benjamin Krem's preface, wherein he explains the basic contents of the book. Part 1 about the Space Brothers and their UFOs, and Part 2 about education in the New Age. Then he presents an article, The Time of Revelation, written for Share International magazine through Benjamin Krem by his master, one of the 63 Masters of Wisdom who make up Earth's spiritual hierarchy. Benjamin Krem is in constant touch with his master. It is this communication link with his master, as well as Krem's own extensive personal experiences, that source the information in the book. This book is not mere conjecture and theory about UFOs and life on other planets. It overflows with facts, certainty and detail as the author weaves his story of our space visitors and their mission of mercy, a spiritual mission. There are caves inhabited by early humanity that have drawings of UFOs and space people on the walls. Benjamin Krem explains that the space people have been visiting humanity on Earth for 300,000 years. He wastes no time in spelling out the importance of this information. There is an enormous amount of information of one kind or another about UFOs. Some of it true, absolutely authentic, and masses of it utterly unreal and unauthentic. This is a huge and all-important subject. Yet for over 60 years, developed nation governments have been denigrating and demonising these loving, helpful space people as aliens who slaughter cattle, probe us and, for unknown reasons, supposedly seek to cause harm to us. A cynical media, including many feature films of Earthlings fighting off space monsters, further feeds the fear and confusion. Benjamin Krem explains the cause of these distortions by our governments. If the people knew that there were wise visitors who wanted to help us, they would stop listening to the world's leaders and ask to hear from the Space Brothers about how to experience the purpose and joy of life more fully. So, acknowledging the existence of such wonderful, advanced human beings would be committing political suicide. Another reason that governments deny UFOs' existence 
is because they are concerned about panic among the people whom they have taught to fear the UFOs. So, governments declare that UFOs are or are not harmful while at the same time denying their existence. Benjamin Krem's master states, yet every government has unassailable proof of the existence, creativity and superior technology of these brave and harmless visitors from sister planets of our system. Humanity exists throughout all of cosmos. However, these visitors from space do not come from the Pleiades or from Sirius, as many think. There is no overt contact between our civilization and that of the Pleiades, says Benjamin Krem. A few are from Saturn and Jupiter, but most of the UFO craft and crews, who are here in their thousands, come from our neighboring planets of Venus and Mars. Mr. Krem describes at least two major world crises where we received help behind the scenes from our space brothers to prevent disaster. The first was in the beginning of the Cold War, when Russia blocked off their zone and separated East Berlin from West Berlin. The second instance was the Cuban Missile Crisis. In both situations, the US presidents at those times received advice from a space brother about how to avert disaster and, with the help of the space people withdrawing negative energy, a very possible nuclear third world war was avoided twice. Just as our physical body is a system and when part of it breaks down, the rest of it rushes in to help the healing, likewise our solar system is an entity, a confederation of planets that has a plan and a great consciousness overseeing that plan, wherein a similar healing can occur. The hierarchy, masters, of all the planets work together in an interplanetary parliament. Planet Earth is holding back the evolution of the solar system because we have not stopped war or pollution. We have taken wrong turns and need help getting back on the path of the plan. So other parts of the solar system, fellow humans from other planets, have rushed in to help. They are here on a rescue mission, a spiritual mission. Their current mission takes place in at least five primary areas which are described in detail in this amazing book. The first part of their mission is to help keep our planet alive by cleaning up our pollution. With huge ships, the space people are neutralizing much of our pollution, especially nuclear, in the air, land and water, and have been doing so for 24 hours a day for years. Without their help, our planet would be dying. The nature of the Space Brothers is to serve. They make great sacrifices to help our planet. They cannot clean it all up because it is not their mess so they are limited by karma, but they do what they can until we wake up and clean it up ourselves. The greatest danger is from nuclear pollution which is spewing forth from all our nuclear power plants and nuclear bomb tests. Benjamin Krem tells us that a source of much confusion and misinformation comes from the limitations of our science. We are only aware of three levels of physical matter, solid, liquid and gas. But there are four levels above the gaseous level called etheric matter. It is physical matter as well, but not solid physical. So one cannot see etheric physical matter unless one has etheric vision. Very few of us do. The UFOs are made up of this etheric physical matter as are the crews that fly them. They see each other just as we do, yet we cannot see them unless they lower the vibration of their body and or their spaceship so they temporarily become solid physical. Then we can see them, but only when they want us to. They do not want to frighten people, so they are careful about showing themselves. If someone is afraid of them, they simply disappear. They leave. 
Etheric nuclear matter is leaking from our nuclear plants and bomb testing, but our instruments are too crude to detect it. The master says that this potent nuclear pollution is the cause of early Alzheimer's disease and dramatically increased births of autistic children. It breaks down our immune systems and makes us subject to diseases, flus, cancers, etc. that we would normally be able to resist. The second part of the UFO's mission is to create the beautiful crop circles appearing around the world. These crop circles, which bend but almost miraculously never break or kill the crops, make a wondrous calling card to tell us they are really here. Benjamin Krem says it beautifully. If you have eyes to see, this sign tells you that someone of tremendous intelligence, skill, tact and reserve has touched the edges of our garment and said, we are here. Another reason for the crop circles, created by thought and made by the UFOs in mere seconds, is to mark the energetic magnetic grid of our planet. This, combined with the sun's energy, is for future use as part of the science of light, a gift to us from the Space Brothers once we have stopped wars, and will provide pollution-free, cost-free, near endless energy for our planet. The third part of the Space Brothers mission is to provide a beautiful and unmistakable sign of a magnificent unprecedented event that will happen soon. 2000 years ago the great teacher Jesus came to inaugurate the age of Pisces and bring his teaching of the love of God. The wise men followed a star as it moved through the heavens and came to rest over Bethlehem, where it shone down on the birthplace of Jesus, so the Magi could honour him. That was not a star. It was a spaceship the size of two and a half football fields, made especially for that purpose. Today there is another star in the heavens announcing the imminent arrival of the teacher for the age of Aquarius. Maitreya, the world teacher, comes to teach the purpose behind the will of God, but it is not really a star. Again, the Space Brothers have created four special giant UFOs the size of five football fields combined, one north, south, east and west around the planet, so that one star can be seen by everyone. They shine and twinkle like stars, but they do not otherwise act like stars. They move, they flash colours, and they have been known to respond to human thought. YouTube is loaded with footage and videos of Maitreya star, as is the SHARE International website www.share-international.org. The stars will remain there, visible on clear nights and days, until the world teacher comes forward and addresses humanity on his day of declaration. The fourth part of the UFO's mission here is to be part of the forces of light, helping Earth's humanity to move forward in our evolution. The space people are working with Maitreya daily, hourly, moment to moment. We think of the forces of light as the esoteric hierarchy, the Christ and his group of masters who make up, with all of their disciples, the forces of light of our planet. They are gathering together a host of people from all over the world to work with them in this coming time. The new group of world servers, created by Maitreya in 1922, are included. All are the forces of light, preparing the way for Maitreya to come forward when the time is right to work openly with humanity in creating a brilliant civilization on Earth. The fifth part of the Space People's mission is as role models for the establishment of right relationship. Living together in peace is Maitreya's call. That is how the Space Brothers live, harmlessly, tactfully, respectfully, writes Benjamin Krem. We are one solar system, 
all of us are engaged in a journey to perfection together. We are at different levels, some nearer the end of the road, some of us struggling to find a path to the right road even after millions of years. The Space Brothers are here to help. With their help, the forces of evil will be destroyed. The forces that prevent people everywhere from living together in peace with justice and right relationship. Right relationship is the next destined step forward for humanity and with the help of the Space Brothers and the emergence of our own hierarchy of masters that will quickly come to be. In The Gathering of the Forces of Light, Benjamin Krem fully explains these and other aspects of our Space Brothers and Sisters rescue mission to Earth through a reprint of his lecture on this topic and the subsequent questions and answers. A central theme of Krem's message throughout is that no one else can do the work for us. We can receive advice and teachings, but we must do the work of reconstruction of our society and our planet. As Maitreya says, man must act and implement his will. Nothing happens by itself. Part 1 concludes with unique colour photographs of Maitreya's star, an enormous spacecraft from Jupiter, and examples of crop formations which appeared in southern England, showing their intricacy and beauty. You're listening to the World Teacher Program on Wellington's Access Radio 106.1 FM. Dick Larson continues. Part 2 of The Gathering of the Forces of Light deals with the changes in education that will be required in the coming time, a time of new science and of an increase in awareness of who we really are and of the forces at work around us. Here Benjamin Krem presents The New Education, an article by his master addressing our existence as souls, a revolution through the law of rebirth and the need for education that addresses life, not just jobs. The master reveals, in today's sense, education is a feeble thing indeed ensuring only the minimum requirements for an understanding and control of man's environment. Education should be understood as the means by which the indwelling God is contacted, known and given expression. The fact of the soul, the divine intermediary, must gain general acceptance and techniques of contact with this higher principle attain common usage. A major problem in education is that we do not know who we are. Each of us is a soul in incarnation. The trouble is that, for the most part, developmental psychologists reject the notion of the soul. Psychology will make no further progress until it recognises the fact of the soul. The soul's purpose is to serve the plan of evolution. The Masters are here to serve the plan and to inspire humanity to carry out their soul's purpose. The more we live like a soul, the less our past can affect, influence and imprison us. So the new education will teach and reveal our personality makeup, our energetic makeup and our personal stage of development on the evolutionary path. Armed with this knowledge, provided through the teachings of the Masters and their disciples, humanity will find itself experiencing growth at a pace heretofore unknown by most. Next in The Gathering of the Forces of Light, Krem reproduces the Masters article on the family. This focuses on the family unit as the basis of all social life and the need to properly nourish the young souls we bring into incarnation to join our family of souls as our children. The new education must institute the training and requirements for family life. 
millions of young people are allowed to enter this field of service, parenting, the most difficult in the world, for the most part devoid of training of any kind. Part 2 also includes educating young children, educating the youth, expected changes in educators and their programs, and the relationship of family and karma, as well as recommendations for further reading along these lines. The Gathering of the Forces of Light concludes with a summary presentation of Transmission Meditation, a free group meditation and one of the most powerful meditations in the world, introduced at his master's request by Benjamin Krem in 1974. It is practiced by groups around the world and this will continue for the next 2,000 years and beyond. The time of revelation certainly includes this fascinating, encouraging and very revealing book. And that concludes Dick Larson's review. Here's a UFO report sourced from the East Grinstead Courier and Observer newspapers and appears in July-August 2013 Share International magazine. Headline, UFOs over Gatwick Airport. At approximately 9am on the 30th of December 2012, three commercial airline pilots in separate planes witnessed flat silver discs flying within 100 feet of their aircraft and hovering in the air at about 1500 feet from the ground as the aircraft approached Gatwick Airport. The UK Airprox Board, an independent body, reporting on safety involving safe distances between aircraft, stated that two flat silver discs were reported to be moving very slowly about 100 feet below the flight path, and that the sighting of the silver discs could not be explained. UFO expert Nick Pope said, The evidence is first rate. The witnesses are experienced pilots and, critically, there is radar evidence to back up their stories. The pilots who saw the objects described them as toy-like and the risk to the planes was assessed as low. Benjamin Krem's master confirms the discs were spacecraft from Mars. This next report appeared in Cher International magazine June 2013 edition. Sourced from the gladstoneobserver.com.au website, it begins Several residents in the Gladstone Tunnum Sands area on the eastern coast of Australia reported seeing a bright orange UFO in the sky on the evening of the 4th of May 2013. One witness said the orange light moved fast at first, then became almost stationary before moving off again. It came back several times and moved the same way each time, the witness said. We saw it three different times, as did our neighbours and some friends in Gladstone. Definitely no ordinary aircraft or satellite. Then it gradually faded as it moved further away. Incredible sight. Benjamin Krem's master confirms that the UFO was a spacecraft from Mars. Our final article this morning is entitled Citizen Hearing on UFOs and begins If the Congress won't do its job, the people will was the motto of the Citizen Hearing on Disclosure held at the Washington National Press Club from the 29th of April to the 3rd of May 2013 and live streamed worldwide. Attempting to end the government truth embargo on the existence of UFOs and financed by a Canadian donor, organiser Stephen Bassett of the Paradigm Research Group modelled the conference on a congressional hearing. Researchers, scientists and former members of the government, military and intelligence community testified for 30 hours before an ex-senator and five ex-members of the United States Congress who were visibly impressed by what they heard. Filmed archive coverage of the hearing is available and a film is planned. 
In November 2011, the White House denied that any life exists outside our planet. There were testimonies from 10 countries. The committee drafted a letter to President Obama requesting the release of medical records denied to two U.S. Air Force veterans who witnessed a UFO at Bentwaters RAF base at Rendlesham Forest, UK, in 1980. A UK serving police officer who collected 430 secret reports of UFOs involving over 940 retired and serving police officers passionately demanded the veil of secrecy be lifted. In contrast, South American researchers said that the existence of UFOs is openly accepted in their countries. As the week went on, the media slowly began to realise this could be a significant event. The UK Daily Telegraph called it an earnest American exercise in representative democracy. The committee called for a global conference hosted by the UN General Assembly to address the evidence for an extraterrestrial presence. Former Canadian Defence Minister Paul Hellyer said, the true currency of the 21st century will not be gold or silver or a basket full of currencies, but trust. There is only one way to regain trust. Find and tell the truth. And that concludes our program today. For more information, please ring us on 06 36 46 101. To inquire about Share International Magazine subscriptions, our free newsletter which contains snippets from the magazine or any books by Benjamin Krem please phone 04 234 or you can write to P.O. Box 9576 Wellington Thank you for listening to us on Wellington's Access Radio 106.1 FM and please tune in for our next World Teacher Programme which will be on Saturday the 3rd of November at the usual time of 10am. You can listen again to this podcast and previous ones by visiting our new library at shareinternationalnewzealand.wordpress.com and click on the radio tab. Mm -hmm.